I've never had a whole herd of deer that lived on my property before. Planting these soybeans combined with setting a sanctuary has transformed my property. It changed everything. This video is going to explain the benefits of this method and go over the planting process start to finish on how to plant these soybeans as you see here with rows of green brassicas, turnips, and radishes through the middle. If you guys are typically kind of give up hunting late season because you just don't see any deer, this is going to change everything. Um, you'll be hunting until the last day. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to try to go into detail on every step. Um, don't think you can't do it. Even if you don't have equipment, don't think you can't do it. Okay, why should you plant like this? What are the benefits? Well, first, it's a space saver. Um, you, you can increase your efficiency per acre. Um, do you have limited acres where you can plant? I do. So, in fact, I have a CRP contract, so I can only plant 10% of my acreage. Um, so this method is a food plotting space saver for sure. You take two food plots, combine into one, and you take up half the space, but you still have twice the food. The second benefit to plant like this is that you have spaces or rows that you can drive your ATV or side by side up and down and you can spray, you can fertilize, um, where otherwise if you had broadcasts that are tight rows, um, you'd smash down beans trying to do that as well as uh, very often I would miss spots when I was fertilizing or spraying and and that would show because you would see big patches of grass or strips where i had missed a small area so this is one way to really keep track of uh, whatever you're applying to the field making sure you get uh, that good coverage um it's perfect because you can drag a disc with the four-wheeler and also the the bean canopy hasn't quite closed in there so you're gonna get sunlight in those rows um and if you just try broadcasting seed into the middle of the soybeans, it's only really going to grow when the leaves turn yellow or uh, where there's kind of some bare spots or patches um, in the beans where the sunlight's going to hit those seeds. A third benefit for this method is uh, maximum attraction. Think buffet line. Lots of different food options for those deer in one compact location. Enough said. Okay, benefit number four. The deer will walk the rows and they don't knock down the uh, bean stalks. So I've also broadcasted beans and what I found is the deer just crisscross and make trails all through the beans and they knock the stalks down is what happens. So the great thing and the benefit we're talking about here, when you plant rows, especially brassicas or whatever, the deer just walk down the rows and they stick their heads into the beans, but they keep their bodies out of the beans. Spacing out the soybeans allows them to get bigger, taller, wider, and each plant is going to put on way more pods. Um, so this is going to save you the most money on seed because you're using, you know, maybe 60 to 70% of the seed that you would normally use, but your bean plants and your bean field still puts out just as many pods because the bean plants themselves grow so much bigger and uh, put on so many more pods when they have the space to do it in. Planting these food plots has become a great passion and a, a great time for me every year. I look forward to it. So I'm excited to share with you guys what I've learned about how I'm planting uh, these soybeans. If you plant them early, like in April, the beans are going to get huge, um, but they're also going to turn brown sooner. So um, probably by if you plant them in April, probably by towards the end of September, they're already going to be yellow and uh, possibly even turning brown in October. The advantage of planting later beans, so like June or July plantings, um, you're going to get several weeks into October where you'll have the beans still being green. If you guys aren't familiar with soybeans, when the beans are green, the deer just love the leaves and they eat the crap out of the leaves. And when the beans start to turn yellow, they really don't 
eat the beans that much when they turn yellow. So you have a three week period maybe when the beans are transitioning from green to brown where they lose their leaves and they're really not eating on them that much during that time. Well then as soon as the leaves drop and they're brown and they got those pods all developed and drying out, the deer start coming in and, and eating the bean pods uh, almost right away and then really, really hard late. I mean it's uh, almost February right now and the, my deer are still hammering these beans. So that's kind of what you can expect and it's just a great way to have deer on your property all year round. My first step as you saw is usually to spray the area and uh, kill everything but my goal is to have a dirt field prior to cultivating. So if like I said, if it's grass then I would mow it or burn it and that's what I do. If there's enough uh, fuel of, of dead grass or whatever it may be to burn, burn it. That's great and it's an easy way. It's actually fun. Um, but the goal is to have a dirt field for cultivating. If you do burn it, you can plant right away or if you're not ready to plant, you can wait for it to green up a few inches and then come in and spray it all to kill it and then go ahead and plant. I'm going to be planting a Roundup Ready bean, which means I can spray the glyphosate after I've planted the beans and it won't kill the beans, but it'll kill most of the other weeds and grass. About a hundred dollar sprayer comes with the spraying wand. One gallon per minute flow pump. Little bitty pump, teed into it, put a valve. Bought one of these twenty dollar something like that nozzle, sprayer nozzle. Sprays like an eighteen foot wide path. Forty one percent glyphosate. Imitator Plus from Drexel. Uh, anywhere from one to four quarts an acre, uh, depending on what kind of weeds you want to kill. How much water you have in here doesn't really matter. The water is just the carrier, the chemical. Uh, up to up to this year, I've always used ATV equipment, um, as you guys have seen. It's a 1959 Perkins Diesel 50 horsepower engine. got a homemade cultivator. Once again, my friend Kevin, um, he doesn't use it anymore. He's moved on to bigger and better things and it's amazing for me. Um, I'm a newbie tractor guy. This is my first year. We think we're farmers now, don't we? It's looking amazing. Beans have been planted only about a week and they are already up anywhere from one to four inches. And the deer are absolutely smashing them. And I, I mean, if I can keep the deer off here for another week or two, um, it, might, it might do good. That's nipped off, but still growing. These little things, I can't remember what they're called, but those are what keeps the plant going. As long as the deer don't eat past these guys, the plant will still live. So this one right here, she gone. Obviously these will live, 
This one right here is a great example of the one that will uh, will come back. It'll survive. Um, as you can see, there's already a little growth coming back on it. Um, these guys are gone. Let's get this Milo granite and this spreader, which, by the way, that's my Agrifab pull-behind spreader. thing is awesome. Milo granite. I know I'm butchering that name. Don't uh, hate me, guys. It's like, this is a crucial step for me. I think otherwise the deer wipe my beans out. The Milo granite is available at any of your farm stores. And it's actually a like winterizing fertilizer. The reason I'm spreading it on the beans is not to fertilize, but it's just literally to keep the deer off the plot. It stinks really bad, and it, probably about two weeks it'll keep your deer off, um, in my experience. And when the plants are short enough, so that the deer's nose is close to the ground and they can smell it, they don't like it. But once the plants get closer to about eight inches or 12 inches tall, um, they can eat the leaves without getting their nose too close to the ground, so it doesn't really work the best then. But by then, once you have 12 inch tall bean plants, um, uh, they're really gonna probably make it because they're, they're uh, growing very fast at that point. Um. Boy, those beans are really gonna have to fill in a lot to fill this space in. If you see, this is a four-wheeler trail path in between uh, six rows. So there's a four-wheeler trail, there's a three-row, there's a three-row, there's a four-wheeler trail. Um, and I've done that throughout the whole plot. So while there's not as many beans planted, like when I broadcast, um, the plants that are there, they have, they're going to have a lot more space. They're going to grow taller. They're going to bush out. They're going to put on a lot more pods. Uh, so I think it'll, I think the bean production will actually be uh, similar. Um, the taking care of the beans will be easier this way. So, um, last year I just drove right through the middle with the four wheeler, but it was hard to keep track of where I had been. And I ended up with a lot of weeds, uh, that didn't get killed off. Damn it. <laughs> nice hope. I want to kill all this stuff so that the beans don't have to compete with any weeds. I'm not sure what they are, but we're going to have to kill them and kill them dead. We've got beans about eight inches tall now. These right here are looking real nice and weed, pretty weed free, right? See down the rows. But look over here. And all this, don't really know what that is. Look how bad it is over here. There's a lot of spots like this. All this. Anyhow, we're gonna hit it real hard. I put a gallon of 41% glyphosate in here with uh, about 22 gallons of water and some dish soap. So, you know, I sprayed all this and there's an improvement overall. If you look down the middle here, That's not looking too hot. There's some weeds that did not die with this Roundup. I'm not sure what all these weeds are, but it looks like the Roundup didn't kill them. Tell you what, I'm gonna hit this again. Ridiculous. Two things. One, the Milo Granite fertilizer that I spread out. It's keeping the deer off the beans from mowing them down. Two, 41% glyphosate that I sprayed. Killed a lot, it looks a lot better, but there's still some some weeds in here that it didn't get. So the weed in this video that I'm not able to kill is called water hemp and I learned a lot about it. Hopefully you guys can watch this video and learn up front and not have to go through this year of uh, learning about it that I had to do the hard way. I'll start from scratch a non-GMO soybean which you can't spray it with herbicides or you'll kill the soybean. There's a, a Roundup Ready bean which means you can plant the soybeans and all these grass and weeds that come up, um, 
you can then go back once all the grass and weeds and things like that start growing up into the soybeans and you can spray the whole field and it's gonna kill everything except the soybeans because the soybeans are Roundup ready, Roundup resistant, whatever you wanna say. So that's awesome, right? Well, over the years, there's been some of these weeds that are now Roundup resistant. Water hemp is one of them. That's the only one I'm gonna talk about in this video because it's the only one I personally have experience with. I don't know a lot about any of the other ones, but what that means is I had an entire field full of soybeans and water hemp because uh, the Roundup wouldn't kill them. Now we went through and we tried picking up as many as we could out by hand. I mowed down the paths with the with the, my zero turn mower. Um, it was nice to have those to be able to do that. And I and I even took the weed eater and I ran up and down and tried to get as close into the beans as I could um, to just knock down some of this water hemp. And the reason is you you just want I mean the, the more weeds that are growing up that's going to take nutrients away from the beans. And by the way, I'll put links in the description below for the Roundup Ready beans I'm using, as well as the next product I'm going to talk about. There's a third type of bean that I know about, and that's called Enlist beans. They can be sprayed with Roundup, they can be sprayed with 2,4-D, and some other things. So what the 2,4-D will kill the water hemp, um, but on Roundup Ready beans, if you were to spray that on there, it would kill them anyway. So. A lot of stuff here, but I'm learning as I go. So the moral of the story, I would spray your field before you plant with some um, pre-emergence. And I believe that's like the 2,4-D and the Roundup mixed together. But um, check with people that know more about you know the chemical side of things. Um, definitely don't want you to take some bad advice from me there. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of water hemp. But we've, we've tried to do our best to um, mow, and then yesterday we tilled had the, with the four-wheeler, as you can see here. This is the bad stuff. Um, next year, I'm going to have to do something different in this field because the uh, water hemp is so bad. What I want to do right now is walk you over to the other side of the field, which is closer to the bedding thicket. My buddy Kevin, he has always done something I found really interesting, and that is plant something called a decoy plot. So he's planting a food plot closer to the deer's bedding than his food plot is for the purpose of that plot getting completely smashed and damaged by the deer. But what it does is that the deer kind of focus on that decoy plot for a while and they stay off of your main plot that you're actually gonna hunt over or, or, or planning to have established. We got rain forecasted for the next couple days so I'm, uh, I'm disking this up and before I'm gonna plant uh, plot topper. If you know what you're looking at, you can see all those seeds were like wheats, oats, and peas. And that's a mix called harvest salad um, that I like to plant a lot. But in this case, I just had that left over. So honestly, I was using that as like a carrier for the seeds I really wanted to put down in, this pl in, in the rows. And that is basically turnips and radishes mix. The mix that I got is a mix called plot topper. Um, I'll put all the links below to those if you guys want to check those out, but um, it's, it's uh, I just like to call it turnips and brassicas, and it's, it's basically the big, big leafy plants that you're gonna that you'll see here in this video, and uh, and then it gets like turnip bulbs and stuff on there. And the other thing I want to mention real quick while I'm on the topic of turnips is that I have found that deer prefer smaller turnips. So guys that are bragging about these huge turnips they have, I'm not really impressed because I've planted turnips and I, I watch the deer, they don't even touch those big turnips. Maybe they'll take one bite out of them or something and they go to those little turnips and they 
it's a magnet, I'm telling you guys. And how you get those little turnips is just plant your stuff later. You know, plant uh, here in the Midwest, like say, um, you get your first frost in November sometime. Plant in uh, late September and, uh, you know, versus a lot of guys are planting turnips in July and August. And just from what I've found, the deer are not as attracted to those big turnips at all as they are those little bitty turnips. Okay, very good. 75% yellow now, and it is October the 3rd. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the brassicas I planted are starting to grow really well now. Um, I don't see any uh, bulbs or anything like that in them yet. Uh, but I, I didn't expect to because I I planted them about a month ago, I guess. Oh yeah, man, there's deer tracks all over in here. This is awesome. As you can see, in between the rows, it worked out. It worked out great, just how I was hoping. Where uh, all these turnips and stuff would grow up right in between all the rows. It's actually, actually blowing away my expectations here. And uh, you can see, turnip bulbs.